Hello, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, part of the Fans First Sports Network. And let me just take a quick second and say to all the fans, thank you so much for your your watching and reading and listening and sharing this these podcasts. Tens of thousands of you obviously hitting a nerve, and we appreciate you. And I just want to make sure that you understand how appreciated you are how grateful we are for you and just wanted to say thanks. Now, uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, some question and answers that I'm getting from you. In the interest of full disclosure, I'm taping this on Sunday. It's going to be published on Wednesday. So if there's been any changes over the last couple of days, I apologize about that. And uh, going to be taking a little bit of time off just a couple of days, but a little bit of time off. Haven't had a chance to do that in a long time. And so looking forward to spending some time with my family. But um, we're going to be getting into some of your questions. Got some great answers for you. And uh, let's just get going. The first one I'm going to address comes from Crystal. And Crystal lives in Alabama. And Crystal says to me, Hondo, there's been a lot of talk about Marcus Peters. What do you know? Well, first of all, I think she's referring to a report by my buddy Vic Taffer from The Athletic um, saying that he thought a signing was likely of Marcus Peters. I've not heard anything that disagrees with that, but I do want to give Vic the credit. He's the one that reported it. Um, but here is what I know. In talking with people um, inside the building and, and people who are in the know, um, I was told originally – don't expect anything until after the OTAs and mini camp. And clearly we're there. Um, was told that there's mutual interest on both parts. But the last time I spoke to someone, I was told nothing imminent. So at this point, the way I would, you know, Vic said likely. So uh, I think that's fair. Um, I, you know, I, I put it probably if someone put a gun to my head, what do you think the odds are? Is it 50-50? Um, I don't think it's imminent at all. I don't think it's something that's absolute going to happen. I think there are some concerns. You know, obviously there was an injury a couple of years ago. They're going to want to be careful about that. There's also going to be how much money is involved because the Raiders are extremely cap disciplined, something we've talked about before. And we're going to get into more today. Um, do I think it's possible? Absolutely. What I think it's probable at 50-50, I, I, you, you can determine whether that's probable or not. I mean, if it's, if it's equal money, I think you can call it that. But nothing imminent. And I'm going to tell you, I, I think the Raiders are, well, I know the Raiders are watching a ton of film. They're watching every rep from every corner from OTAs and minicamp. They're looking at a lot of different stuff. You know, when you bring in a Marcus Peters, the chances are then you have to look and say, okay, well, not the chances. Then you have to look and say, okay, who are we going to let go? And if you've got some young guys that you believe in and you've got some young guys that you think, you know, okay, I think we can do something with this guy. Look, let's just use Sam Webb as an example. I think Marcus Peters is a better corner today than Sam Webb. I do. But I also know Sam Webb comes with a lot cheaper dollar amount on the towards the salary cap and you've got him on a long-term deal. So do you think he can develop into somebody better than that? What, what about a meek Robertson? What about maybe some veterans that you've signed? Okay. Do we keep some younger guys? Let one of them go. There's so much that goes into it that um, again, I, do I think it's possible? Absolutely. Do I think it's imminent or when I, maybe not imminent? Do I think it's going to happen? No, I don't think it's that point at all yet where it's a done deal, but I, I think it's a definitely a possibility. And uh, that leads us to our next question. That comes to us from Trent. Trent is from Michigan and Trent says, Hondo, um, I saw you talking about Dave Ziegler and his salary cap discipline. I am not big on the business side of the NFL. Can you explain that? Yeah, that's a great question, Trent. Now, first of all, let me put it to you this way. When you put together a salary cap, there is a hard um, a hard limit on what teams can pay, and it's based on a percentage of revenue. 
every team has the same salary cap. And what happens is, is you have to look at that. Now, everyone wants, you know, nobody wants to let a player go. But the problem, excuse me. But the problem is that, let, let's just use a $100 bill. Let's say the salary cap is $100, and we all know it's much more than that. All right, and you got to pay your players. So if you figure out there's 53-man roster, we know there's more than that because you've got practice players and everything else. But let's just say, let's just use the 53 as an example. Well, you know, 53 into 100, you can't pay everybody $2. All right, then you're going to have some guys like a Devontae Adams who may be a four or five dollar player. Max Crosby may be a four or five dollar player. And then you got to figure, all right, so I need to get some late round picks, some day three picks, and some UDFAs who may be nickel, dime, quarter players. And and that's only from a payment standpoint because I've got to be able to have some lower paid players to put everybody in the mix. And so those are all things that you dig in on, look at and pontificate when you're putting together a roster. And so, for example, in the past, you would see the Raiders give big deals to players and then they didn't produce, but they, but so much of their salary cap. Now, when you cut a player, like last year, they let Alex Leathergood would go, and I and I'm I'm pulling this out of my head. So if I'm off a little bit, I'm not lying to you. But I think he had a 15 million dollar dead cap hit. So to get rid of him last year, 15 million dollars of their salary cap went into him now, and he wasn't even part of the team. And so there was a lot of bad deals in the past that the Raiders would do that handicapped the team. I remember John Gruden used to be frustrated at guys they couldn't pay. And it was one or two deals, either too many bad contracts or the Raiders were in a position where they could guarantee money long term, but couldn't write checks right up front. Now that's not even an issue since they moved to Vegas, not even in the cards. But those are all things. And so Dave Ziegler came in and he's trying to build for the long term. And he understands that I've got to be very disciplined with the cap. I can't overpay people. And I need a lot of these younger guys to pan out because I want to have the Max Crosby's and the Devonte Adams here. So that is literally what I was speaking about, Trent, and in, in understanding cap discipline. It's no different than what every American family does every month with their budget, figuring out, all right, this is how much I've got coming in. Here are my expenses. How much is going to go into savings? How much is going to go into investing? How much is going to go to debt elimination? Whatever. All of that. And and it's and a lot of people I think think like the NFL salary cap is like the federal government, which means they print money. Well they don't. And in the NFL, it's a very strict cap. And quite frankly, I think it's better for the National Football League. I think it's made the NFL, um, you know, everyone hates parity. But every NFL fan loves it that every year you go into the season. And even if your team is horrible, like Arizona this year, man, they're just terrible tanking for Caleb. But even um, if your team's horrible, you still feel like I got a chance. And so I think it's been good in the long term for the National Football League. And then the last we're going to get to, and, and I thought this one was really good. This comes to us from Vanessa. And Vanessa says, Dear Mr. Carpenter, I have heard you talk about Max Crosby being the best in the NFL and Devontae being the best wide receivers. Is there any other players in this team you think are the best at what they do? Thanks, Vanessa. Vanessa. And Vanessa is from Arizona. Um, first of all, Vanessa, thank you. I think that's the first email you've ever sent me. So thank you for sending it in. Um, I, I want to get into this a little bit because I think this is really important. I don't think there's any question that Max Crosby and Devontae Adams are the very best at what they do. Now, I think, Dev but here's an issue you got to understand. Now, many of you know this. Matt Millen is a dear friend of mine. I love Matt. 
And I remember when Matt was with the Detroit Lions and the Detroit Lions had a very high ranking pick. And there were a lot of people within the organization who wanted Calvin Johnson to get picked. And Matt's argument was, listen, Calvin Johnson's going to be a great player. Nobody's questioning that. But a great receiver impacts a game at the most, 10 or 15 times at the most. And a great offensive lineman, 65 plays a game. Or a great middle linebacker, 65 plays a game. And Matt really loved Patrick Willis, who ended up being an all-pro as a rookie, a linebacker, and Joe Thomas of the Browns, who you, everybody remembers him, loved him. But there was a lot of internal pressure. People went around. Matt went to the owner um, and and were lobbying to get Calvin Johnson. And like Matt said, Calvin Johnson was a great player. But he didn't impact the Lions on half their plays like guys that Matt was extremely interested in, but everybody's got a boss, including Matt Mill. And uh, I'll have a lot more to say about Matt's time in Detroit at another time. Now is not the time. But my point to you is that, you know, Matt understood your best players. So Devonte Adams, best wide receiver in the NFL, but I don't think he impacts a game over a whole long period like a guy that's out there every play. Now, you still pay him incredible money because he deserves it. He's the best at what he does. Max Crosby impacts this team every single time his foot is on the field. If you watch him, he impacts the game when he's on the sideline, when he's watching the offense. He's cheering. Guys are coming off the field. You watch players come off the field to maybe drop the pass or had a turnover a quarterback with a bad drive. And when he's running back on the field, man, he's talking to him. He's, he's, he's lifting him up. Max Crosby is, I'm going to say this, Devontae Adams is a game changer. Best wide receiver in the game. You know what? He may make 10 or 15 catches a game, and he may have the one spectacular that gets a touchdown. He's a game changer. I'm not minimizing Devontae. Max Crosby is a game changer, but he's a franchise changer. Um, Tom Izzo, who's the Hall of Fame basketball coach for Michigan State, and is a dear friend of mine. Uh, Tom Izzo and I were talking once in his basement, and, and we were just joking and laughing, and we were talking about the game. And he talked about when your best player is your hardest worker, it sets your teams up for success. Because everybody then knows that's the standard that the very best player practices like that. The very best player is in the weight room like that. The very best player is, is in his case, putting up shots in the NFL. It's out there doing extra work. Max Crosby is the best player on this team. He's the best football player on this team. And Max Crosby impacts it. He's getting guys to do extra tape, extra film. He's getting him to do out there and do extra reps, get in the weight room more. He's out there impacting the game when he's not on the field. Max Crosby's the best player on this team. It's not even debatable. He's a guy you sign and give the big jack because you not only know he's going to come in and impact the team where he plays, he's going to impact the team in every area. Now, the question was from Vanessa, um, do you think there are other players on this team that are the best? Yes, Devontae Adams. Now, there are some other players. Um, I have said this numerous times. I think Josh Jacobs is the second best running back in the NFL. I know that that bothers a lot of people. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I have no problem. I'm not God. You can criticize me. I'm not a media member that thinks, oh, I'm a member of the media. and You are the low people and don't have an opinion. How dare you disagree with me? No, I don't buy that crap. And that's exactly what it is, is crap. I have my opinion. I, 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 I think Josh is the second best. So it's semantics. Whether you're one or two, does it really matter? But uh, I think Josh is the second best, and I think he's a great player. I think uh, Daniel Carlson, best kicker. Best kicker. I think you can debate about some other guys being in that argument. 
So do I think I, I think he's the best, but he's right up there, you know, in a, in a group of probably three guys, maybe four. So I think he's there. AJ Cole, same way. I think he's he's a leap hunter. I, if, if I was the Raiders, I mean, wouldn't let any, any of them either of them go. Love, I mean, think they're both great. So yeah, I think there are some guys that are there. I don't think anyone else on the team is the best. I think some are close. I think Colton Miller is a top four left tackle. I mean, he's a star. He's really, really good. I have a lot of respect for him and uh, like him, like him a lot. So uh, again, great player. So I, I do I think there are any others that are at their best? I think you can make an argument for Josh, Daniel, and AJ, but that's where it goes. And I think Max Crosby, before his career is over, is going to be the best player in the NFL. I think he's going to be that good. I, I just – he has that it factor that you just can't miss. And that ability to impact the franchise. I mean, I wish every Raider fan could be out of practice. I really do. I, I think it would be be beneficial. I wish the Raiders would do some of their practices that are open to donors – um, are not donors, but ticket holders. I wish they would open some of them and put it in Allegiant Stadium. I think it would be great. I, I think Raider Nation would show up in huge numbers and I think would allow you guys to see a little bit more um, behind the curtain and a little bit more of what makes Crosby super special. Now, I, I said there was only one more and then I had a sticky note that I got to read to you because I forgot about this one. And I wanted to put it out there. This comes to us from Billy. Billy says, Dear Mr. Carpenter, I recently heard you, I don't remember if it was radio or television, discussing um, Mac Hollins from last year and about captains. Can you please explain what you're talking about? I missed the last half and I would like to hear your thoughts. Billy, I told you I would answer this and I had forgotten. I'm glad I did a sticky note. So there you go. Um, yeah, so I was a big Mac Hollins guy. I really, really liked Mac Hollins a lot. You know, the, for the fact that the guy came in here and was a captain and he came in in the offseason, tells you everything you want to know. But after the season, um, when they had the last media day, um, most of the players didn't want to talk to the media, which I'm fine with that. Let me just say this to you. You see, sometimes the media acts like they're entitled. That sense of entitlement. I don't like a sense of entitlement in anybody for any reason other than my 10 month old baby who screams the moment he's hungry. I mean, he's a baby, but I don't like a sense of entitlement anywhere in life outside of a baby. And I don't have a problem with with players not wanting to talk. It was a disappointing season. No problem with that whatsoever. And as a media member, I have never felt entitled. The entitlement sometimes among the media is just mind blowing to me. Um, I've actually heard media complain about food served at games because they'll give you a media meal. And I've looked at him and said, they're not even obligated to give you a meal. Why can't you just be quiet and be grateful? But that's another story. But I'm saying all that because I want to lay the foundation that I don't think I'm entitled to any player to talk to me. However, when the season was over, you saw the captains come out to speak. And I respected that. And the captains should have come out and spoke, not because they owe me anything, but they owed their teammates. It was a disappointing season a disappointing season last year. And on the last day of media, if players don't want to come talk, I don't blame them. I don't blame them. I was tired of talking about it. But I know there were several players that were disturbed when Mac Collins hid in the hallway. And in fact, I had one text me before I even left the Raiders facility I won't read you the text because it doesn't matter. But talking about how big of a pile of uh, crap. Let's 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 clean it up a little bit. It was 
that this is our captain, this is our elected guy to represent us, and you're hiding in the hallway. And I thought that was ridiculous. And you didn't see that from the other captains. And they did their job. And again, I don't think they owed me anything, but they owed their teammates who elected them to represent them. Again, I have no issue with any player that didn't want to face the media on the last day. I've got an issue with the captains who didn't because you were elected to represent your teammates and you didn't. And Matt Collins didn't. And I lost a lot of respect for him that day. Do I still think he's a good man? Yes. Do I still think he's an honorable human being? Yes. Do I think he did a disappointing thing? Absolutely. But in the interest of fair disclosure, I look back over my life and I can see times that I've disappointed. And so I'm not, I'm not berating his character. I just felt like after that, I mean, if I, I remember telling my wife that night at dinner about it and showed her the text from the player. And she said, what do you think is going to happen? I said, I just don't think he's going to come back. And there was a lot of people that thought maybe he would. But again, I just felt like he let his teammates down. And in football, you know, one day you're playing in 100 degrees, next day you're playing in the snow. And so, it, it, you know, there's so many different variables in football. But it is a team sport. It is the consummate team sport. That and hockey are the consummate team sports. Yeah, Major League Baseball is, but, you know, a pitcher can change a game and a home run hitter, whatever. But when you look at in basketball, I mean, we know what one player can do. But in football and hockey, it is the consummate team sport. And so when a captain lets his teams down, that's a huge deal. And I know that Mac had teammates that he let down. And that's what I was talking about um, when I said that. So thank you for that. All right, everybody. I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. This is our weekly question and answer here on the, on the uh, Sports Illustrated Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, part of the Fans First Sports Network. Thanks for joining us. Wish you all nothing but the well. But well, God bless you. And we'll see you again real soon. Thanks, everybody.